and I thought I was through raising kids, but I had one grandson that um, was having a terrible struggle with drugs. Nobody could seem to touch him. Uh, he was too embarrassed to let the family know too much about, we did not realize, for instance, that he was homeless for five years. His dad didn't tell us because his dad was too embarrassed to admit that he could not manage to raise his only child. Uh, when he came to me, his dad brought him here because he had just had nine teeth pulled due to using meth, rotting the teeth. His dad brought him here and he stayed. And I really started learning what really had happened to him and his traumas through childhood, which hadn't been clarified to us. Uh, his dad was very secretive, didn't want us to know some of the things. He lived in a different town. So when I really got my grandson here, and I became his mother that he had never had. His mother had run off when he was 11 months old. Um, I shared all of the things that I possibly could with him, but most of all I shared love. He had never felt loved and or wanted. And um, it was so touching that, to watch his progress that I wrote a book about him called An Indigo Struggles to Overcome Drugs. And he is an indigo. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the indigo children. They're a group of children who are on the have an indigo aura. They're all very hyper. Um, they're all extremely independent. They're hard to raise children, so I can't say that it was all my son's fault. He was very difficult to raise, and he's been with me for two years, and he is difficult, <laughs> but he's also very loving. But these indigo children, because they are different, they are going to change the world. They are the John the Baptist type personalities that are coming to the earth just before the appearance of the Christ in the same way that John the Baptist introduced um, Jesus. And they are coming as the wild men dressed in camel hair with the loud voices just like John the Baptist did. They're not quiet little people. Uh, my, Like I said, my image of a, a church person would or a divine person would be the little you know, all dressed in white, and the indigos certainly aren't that. They are warriors. They are going to change the world. And the group that is following them are the little crystal babies. Most of the indigos are from age 30 to about age 14 or so at this time. And the little crystal babies, I think the oldest ones probably are about six or perhaps seven years old. And many of the indigos are having crystal babies. And the idea is the crystal babies are so pure, they're extremely the opposite of the indigos. They are quiet natured, they are not warriors, they're totally pure. They're going to be the golden age leaders. But they can't come, they're too um, timid or whatever the pure or whatever word you might want to use to just come in and straighten up the world and start ruling it. They can't do that. These extremely um, active indigos will sweep in first like John the Baptist, get the world cleaned up, and then after it's cleaned up, the little crystals will start being the leaders. And that's the divine plan. And so I feel very honored to have had this two years with my grandson living with me. We've become great buddies. Um, I've worked with St. Germain for um, over 30 years with the Violet Flame, and the Violet Flame is very close to the indigo energy so I can understand that even though I'm not as hyper and, and dynamic about it uh, as he is uh, but it's giving me an idea of how the golden age is going to manifest because if there are a whole tribe of people like him the world doesn't stand a chance it's going to change <laughs> you don't argue with the indigo <laughs> and they're wonderful people they're very loving people but they have a, a pure vision of how utopia should be, and they're going to make it that way. And when they get it straightened out, then the little crystals will be able to be the rulers. So this book uh, tells of his tremendous struggles to get off math. They say that only eight in a hundred can ever get off math, and he was able to. He's been off for a while. He's gone back to college. He's gotten his life straightened out. And uh, it's just been a wonderful blessing to have him here. Mm.
Will you say something about tough love? Tough love. Um, as I had him here, I had so many relatives saying, well, you're babying him, you're, you should be tough, you should do this and that. But I don't think love is tough. And I interviewed quite a few other indigos as I met through him, as he got into some groups. And, and I interviewed a lot of people who had been on drugs and had finally gotten off drugs. I asked them what they thought of the tough love. They said it didn't help them at all. They figured that people had tough love because they didn't want to bother with them. And I feel that love should be unconditional. And I don't think the unconditional love is very tough. There may be some guidelines where you might say tough love, like I would have a rule, for instance, uh, when he first came, that you can't have drugs here and you can't bring any of your drug buddies here. That was my house rule. But as for loving him, I loved him unconditionally, and he had never been loved that way before. In fact, he hadn't felt the love. Um, he felt that that his father just did the things that made him look good to others rather than to truly love him. And, um, and so he's learned a lot through all of this, and he wants to be a counselor now and help others. And he said one of the things he would never do is be tough, that he would always love everybody unconditionally. But he would have rules. So I'm not saying there shouldn't be any rules. But he's told me several times, Grandma, you're the first person that's really ever loved me. Yeah. And it kind of brings tears to my eyes when he says that, that, that I do love him. And even when he's um, being kind of wild, I just see, well, he's very different, but I can love him anyway. I mean, that's what's making him powerful, and all the indigos. So I just have a great admiration for all the indigos now, and I can't wait for the violet flame. They are what the uh, Native Americans are calling the, um, the, the, fire, the fire beings, the uh, beings of the seventh flame, or the seventh fire, and they've been predicted to come back, and the indigos are them. <laughs> We're well, blessed. <laughs> thanks for sharing that.